A little recap of the football game. Um, Springfield got to see the gold standard of FCS football in North Dakota State. They had a, they brought in a good team, a well-coached team. They, they did a nice job. We obviously came up short in multiple areas. Can't turn the football over on offense. And then on defense, we can't let people run for you know 6.4 yards a carry and then throw the ball for explosive plays. Um, we got a lot of work to do uh, to get better each week. And it starts now. Extremely excited about the opportunity ahead with Western Illinois. Good road trip um, to get down there and continue to compete and find ways to win ball games. You say the gold standard of FCS football. That's where you want to build this into. Is just a program like that. Where do you look back in this game to where this program needs to improve as far as personnel, everything to try to get up there? Yeah, I definitely think. I mean, even when you look onto the football field, just even if you didn't have the heights and weights, the the, the visual look was different. Um, and you again, when you have won for 20 consecutive years, when you're when you have you know meal supplementation, when you have dining halls exclusively for those types of things, um, your, your players tend to grow and develop at a little different rate. I think that's one thing that we're trying to improve here every single year at Missouri State. And then, again, you look at tradition and in regards to setting the foundation of what you're trying to build. They've done a really good job there. They're, they're a championship caliber football team in all ways. Uh, first class and pretty much everything they do, they play extremely hard. And uh, again, that's that's what you look at as a coach in regards to kind of, if you really want to be competitive year in and year out in this conference, you have to be able to relate to a team like that. You sit there, I mean, it's four touchdowns was a difference on the scoreboard, but you sit there and be like, this is how far off we are from something like that? No, I don't think so. I mean, obviously the, the physical, physical side of it, just the anatomy of it, yeah, you would say our rosters are, are not very close at the moment. But you look at the football game and how it kind of turned out, there's a 14-point swing with two minutes to go before the half. You go into the half 14-7, to seven and again, I'm not a fortune teller. You, who knows how it would have shaken out, but you certainly would have felt better about coming out of the half, getting the football to start the second half with some momentum. Instead, we have a 14-point swing, and we're going in 21-7, and it's just a totally different ball game at that point. You look forward to Western Illinois, but then the remainder of the schedule, you don't have the ranked teams anymore. What have you improved on in these battles with the ranked teams that you can turn to maybe get a little bit of a run going? Yeah, we've gone through the gauntlet, to say the least. I mean, we've, we've played the best of the best week in and week out. And I think it, again, like we talked about earlier in the interview, it's one of those things that when you see these ranked teams and you, and you see kind of how they look, how they do things, how they operate as a program, um, you know, we, we know where we want to get to, and we know that that's the type of football that we feel like we will be able to one day play here at Missouri State. And I don't think we're as far off as people think. Obviously, we're a one and four football team, but I think it's deeper than that. I think there's things that are going on in, the, in these buildings um, with these young men that I think we'll get there, and everybody will be better for it. Obviously, the number of injuries to deal with, that's not an excuse, that's just a part of football. Right. But one of the things that you see then with injuries is opportunities for other players. Talk to me a little bit about Kanye Young. A 10-tackle performance on Saturday, a tackle for a loss, a quarterback hurry. Vaughn Young was out. That meant this young man got more reps. He looked good out there. Yeah, Kanye is going to be a really good player. I'm excited about him. Um, really good observation on him because he is actually really young as well. He was a qualifier, went to a junior college, so he only had to do a semester. So he's really a second semester freshman, you would say. I mean, he's he's got three or four left. He'll be here for a long time. Really like the way he handles business. He's got power. You know, when you used to watch Farron play, um, they're, they're kind of similar in regards to the natural power and snapping their hips. It, it's really good to see. We talked about Jason after the, or Jacob after the game the other day. Um, as far as eligibility, is he giving you any, any indication? Because he could probably uh, probably submit for a medical red shirt. Just kind of how are those talks if you've had them early on? Yeah, as unfortunate as his injury is, um, due to the significance of it, he's only played his four games. We're absolutely going to apply for a medical red shirt. Um, he has voiced his his want to and desire to stay and build something special here at Missouri State. Um, I think he can be a record-setting quarterback in this offense, and he feels the same way. He, he's a leader of this offense, and you know I think he is settled in for the long haul, and I think that's something he's going to pursue. So it's another two years after this one. Yeah. You would be 
trying to go for. Exactly. So he should have definitely one, and if the appeal goes through, you get your second. I know the NCAA, sometimes they grant it, sometimes they don't. I'm not sure about the criteria. It's a lot of college for him. Right? A, a ton. No, no it's, that's, such a, that's a really good question and something to talk about because I sat there and looked him dead in the eyes, and I said, Jacob, this is a, you know, with, with the COVID kids, they've been in college for a long time. Um, it's, it's a lot of the same year in and year out. And I told him, I said, you really have to look in the mirror and see where your heart's at in regards to what you want your next three years to look like. Because make no mistake about it, these guys work year in and year out. It's a lot on your body. It's a lot on you mentally. Um, and I told him, I said, that's the first thing you got to decide. Do you want to be a college student for a few more years? Or are you ready to go start your life, start, try to get an NFL career? And if not, you know, do whatever you find passion and purpose with. And he's, he's settled on the answer is yes. He wants to, you know, perform here at Missouri State and be the best he can be. Is there any indication just throughout this whole pre, this whole regular season he's been dealing with shoulder issues, whether it was a Kansas game, it seemed to get better until it had that separation or whatever mm -hmm. that, uh, that's defined by yeah. the AC joint. Just re-injury just seems to be something just how – and how much of a worry is that going into the future? I don't know if doctors have indicated anything. Yeah, we have, we have talked to some specialists around the country and talked to some NFL guys in regards to how to handle quarterbacks specifically. Um, and I don't think the procedure will be super invasive since he decided he elected to do the surgery right now. I think they're going to regraft some of his own tissue and tie it down nicely, and I think he'll be able to get back to 100%. Is that tear? Is it just a bad sprain? It's, it's just an AC joint separation. They, okay. they grade it in regards to, you know, which grade it is. Um, and again, I'm not going to speak on his private medical situation, but it's bad enough to require surgery. And then out for the rest of this year? Obviously. Yes, sir. Whether it was Jacob at quarterback or Jordan getting to start this Saturday, one of the things that hasn't changed is the play of Raylan Sharp. Mm -hmm. Raylan had another career day, 13 catches, 153 yards. Talk about what he means to your offense right now. Yeah, Mr. Consistent. When you need a play to be made, they're looking at Raylan. Um, he's one of the toughest guys, pound for pound. I've bragged on him constantly this, the whole time we've all been together, and he proved it this week. He made an unbelievable catch for a third down. Um, you know, the whole staff had his back. I wasn't. I wasn't super pleased with the whole circumstances that led up to that flag. Um, you know, they thought I was upset with that. I was upset with, again, the, the process that got us to that point. Um, but anyways, Braylon is a guy that you look at and you just watch him practice. Like, he's a guy, he hits the practice field and he, he comes alive. He enjoys football. He loves football. He loves the grind of what comes with it. And he can get it done. He's got super quicks. He's got great hands. Uh, and just a mentality of a winner. Can you talk about just Western, what you need to attack um, offensively and defensively from these guys? Yeah, with Western, and we, I have to relay what we're going to be talking about as a team the whole rest of the way. You know, every, all the noise from media and everyone else has been about the next opponent, the next ranked opponent, the next, you know, the, the gold standard of North Dakota State, we have to focus on us and develop who we are as Missouri State football. We have to start doing things better in the day-to-day -day in regards to approaching practice, in regards to situational football. We're really taking it as an approach of how much better can we get this week and compare it to the tape against North Dakota State. And if we can get better each and every week, you know, we're going to try to make some things shake and, and put together a few wins. What is it that they do well? I mean, this has been a rough year for them, but just what is it something that you guys are going to focus on? Today? Yeah, I think they'll they'll try to again when you when you see the numbers with our run defense, they should say they can run the ball. Um, I think they'll try to run some zone scheme things like that with an effective back. I like their quarterback. He's a big, strong kid, good arm, um, doesn't hesitate to run the football. He's he's a strong kid, uh, and then on defense, you know, Todd Drury and those guys, they, they've done the best they could. Uh, they like to move around quite a bit. They'll, you know, overshift to some motions and stuff. But we have to try to do the best we can to get any advantage possible. And you touched on the run blocking there, and that's something you guys were very confident going into the year that it could happen. Just how surprised have you guys been, and how much of an adjustment has that been? Yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly been an issue. Um, and you know, you look at the things that you work on, and some of it sticks from the off season, some of it doesn't, because obviously the glaring issue was we were 
the, the top team in sacks given up in the country. We're no longer that group. So box one, check. All right, we're, we're talking about run game influence and ability to change the game in the run. Not quite there yet. Um, again, it, it hasn't shown up. And again, you guys are going to look at me crazy. We're going to still try to run the football and try to get better at it each and every week. Uh, and hopefully at the end of the year, when it's all said and done, we'll say, hey, you stayed committed to it long enough, finally broke through. So you're going to be their homecoming. Is there something that you've talked to the team about in terms of being scheduled as a team's homecoming and how much fun it is to spoil that? Oh, it's great. Yeah, not, nothing like, you know, some added festivities and, you know, so a, little, a little more cheering for, for the away team. I love that. Uh, I've always enjoyed people having special things when you're scheduled to come in and play. Um, you know, we all remember in high school who the team was that you scheduled for homecoming. So that should be a little added incentive to go to go play hard. And as a competitor, you know, people are going to take this the wrong way, but there's nothing better than going into somebody's, you know, event and disrupting it a little bit. Now, it's not every day you get an NFL Hall of Famer on your sideline like you had at the game. I'm just wondering what that was like for you guys. Did you have Terrell Owens talk to the team or anything like that? Terrell's awesome. He doesn't want any of that. Um, Terrell's a guy that – he is totally different from what everyone else sees on the highlights and everything to who he is as a father and a man. I have a ton of respect for Terrell. He was awesome to be around. He, we spoke frankly, and he was just he was just a dad wanting to be there for his son and cheer on Missouri State football. He actually, you know, again, we talked about some of the things he saw, some of the things he liked, some of the things he doesn't, didn't like, and he's happy that Tariq is here with us. He believes in what we're doing here. And he is, again, I would like to have him at every game. I think he's an awesome dude. Um, I want him around more. You say he doesn't want that. He introduced Sunday Night Football last night. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first one on the show, and he had the popcorn and everything. <laughs> yeah, it, it, again, I think it, it shows how much Sunday Night Football I watch. <laughs> you know, we, we were in here trying, trying to get a beat on Western. But, you know, I wish, I wish more people could see that side of him because it, it really is cool to see because I honestly, because he came around last year when Bobby was here and I was expecting some of that, some of that kind of competitive spirit just to seep through and, you know, maybe some flash, cut some jokes or, you know, want to be the, the front and spotlight, but he just wants the backlight. He doesn't want any of that. He wants everything to be on the team. He wants things to be on, um, you know, his son and where it should be. And I, I respect that as, a, as man to man, as a father to father. That's, that's pretty cool because he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, guys. And he was sitting there enjoying the game, enjoying the environment at, at Missouri State football. And why not have a few more of those guys around? He always says he's, he's available and he can play and still. Uh, how do you look to you? Yeah, tremendous. <laughs> I mean, he, he, we were in pre-practice pre and I, was, I had the staff come around and go, guys, that's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I said, just in case you need any help recruiting, look at that guy. That's who you want to recruit and get to this program. I mean, he can, his hands are giant. I mean, they just, they just are huge and his, his frame is great. I mean, he looks like he could go play right now for anybody in the country. Hell, he could go play pro. Did you lock him down? I mean, you've got, you got your old <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to sit up here and say no. Why? Well, come on. That's, yep. that's yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I promise you, it won't be for lack of effort. <laughs>